Welcome. So here we're going some verifying some uh, trigonometric check identity. And it says to pick one side and then picks the most complicated. Now, a lot of times I say, eh, it's kind of here or there. What's going to be the most complicated? I think we can kind of agree the left side is going to be more complicated uh, than the right side. Well, here we have an addition, we have multiplication, we have three trigonometric identity or three trigonometric terms, and then on the right side we only have one. So we're definitely going to want to go and work on the left side, and we want to see all right, what identities can we use? Well, by looking at this, I can't use my Pythagorean identities, which are very important, which we use a lot. But the next identity I could use is, you know, we, the only other identities I could use are would be my quotient and my reciprocal identities. And a lot of those come into converting everything to kind of sines and cosines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this um, by using everything as far as my um, uh, reciprocal and quotient identities. So therefore, I have cosine of x plus, um, let's see here, I'm going to have sine of x times sine of x over cosine of x. OK? So therefore, I'm now going to have cosine of x plus sine um, squared of x all over cosine of x. All right? so. Huh, seems like we're getting a little crazy here. Um, next step that I might want to do is, well, I could combine like terms, right, to get them to be the same. So I could multiply, since this is over 1, I could multiply by cosine um, over cosine of x. Therefore, that would give me with cosine uh, squared of x plus sine squared of x all over cosine of x. OK, seems like I'm just keep on getting more and more complicated. But now let's go, well, I know I can use my Pythagorean identity for this. So remember, my Pythagorean identity for sine, cosine, and squared is going to be sine squared plus cosine squared of x right, equals 1. So therefore, I could rewrite this. Um, remember, we want to keep everything in terms of cosine. So I'm going to want to um, figure out what figure out how I can rewrite cosine in terms of sine. So I'll subtract sine squared. And what I left is cosine squared of x equals 1 minus sine squared of x. OK? So now by plugging uh, 1, or I'm sorry, uh, what am I doing? I don't want to solve for cosine. I want to solve for sine. Sorry, I keep on going back through this. You want to solve for sine. So you're going to subtract cosine squared of x on both sides. Therefore, you could say that sine squared of x is equivalent to 1 minus cosine squared of x. The reason why I want to do that is because now I can plug in 1 minus cosine squared of x in for sine squared of x, eliminating all other sines. Because when you look on the right side, we know that secant is 1 over cosine, right? It has nothing, there's no sine or anything in there. So I want to get rid of any kind of form I have a sine. So now I'm going to have cosine squared of x plus 1 minus cosine squared of x all over cosine of x. Well, in this form, you notice that my cosine squared of x is going to subtract cosine squared of x, leaving me with 0. Just leave me with 1 over cosine of x, which we know is, by using my reciprocal identity, is equal to secant of x, which on our right side is equal to the secant of x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you simplify your trigonometric identity. Thanks.